set. Welcome back to It's a Grey Matter, where we're doing PowerPoint night. As always, we're keeping it random, but this time, we got the help of baby hands. Between you and me, this is gonna make drawing the random papers a little bit harder. We're gonna start with neuroimaging techniques. This might take a bit. It's totally my hands doing this. This time, it's PET, positron emission tomography. Now, onto our hook, as if baby hands wasn't enough. Looks like we're doing Phineas and Ferb, specifically Dr. Doofenshmirtz and Perry the Platypus. Looks like that's copyrighted too. So we're just gonna be doing a regular platypus, if not the baby hands. Finally, we're on to our PowerPoint theme. Totally using my hands to open this. And would you look at that? It's wood type. Not like Pokemon. So I'll get to work and I'll see you guys in a few minutes. So today we'll be learning about positron emission tomography, otherwise known as PET. And I've got platypi on here because we like to pet the platypi and it's a good way to remember an acronym. So we're gonna get started with the mechanisms. Overall, PET uses radioactive tracers to track biochemicals in the body. Because of this, it's known as a molecular imaging technique. So this tracer is a solution with atoms that have positrons, positively charged electrons, that is injected into the bloodstream. It's kind of a chemical oxymoron if you think about it. So during the PET procedure, the patient normally lies down and has their head in a brace, as I like to call it, full of photon detectors that help detect the positrons, where they are, and how they're interfering with activity. So what are the current uses and future uses of PET? As of right now, in oncology and neurology, PET is used both for the diagnosis and treatment tracking of certain diseases. It's also used to measure metabolism in the brain by working directly with glucose and measuring how those neurons metabolize it. It also measures behavioral neuroscience. This means that researchers take a control scan and a test scan to see any metabolic differences in certain regions and to see if those regions correlate to that certain task. Measuring biochemicals is very similar. Researchers basically do that control and chemical scan and take those differences and see the metabolic differences and where that chemical is involved. Next up, it's also used in hybrid cardiac imaging with CT. This is fairly new because it was mentioned as a current use in one of my articles that was mentioned as a goal of use in another article. So with goals, we also have cardiac imaging listed. A specific goal is cardiac imaging with MRI, identifying specific receptors and regions for biochemicals, identifying the impact of proteins and neuropathology, and measuring tumor proliferation are quite a few of the goals of PET. Next up, we have the pros and cons. So what are the benefits of PET? It is very useful for direct measurement of glucose by neurons. MRI and NIRS both use hemoglobin as an analog of metabolism. Next up, it has minimal listed radiation exposure due to short-lived positrons. Then it has improved soft tissue imaging when paired with MRI compared to when it's paired with CT. And it allows cardiac imaging in hybrid form, but only with CT right now. As for the cons, it has low spatial resolution, especially compared to MRI and CT, which is why it's often hybridized with those two techniques. It has very long scans for each frame, meaning that PET scans are very limited limited in the information they give. There are still concerns about radiation exposure because even though that exposure is minimal, it is still there. And it often has difficulty translating the technique to pulmonary imaging. So what that means is that even though we can use it for cardiac imaging, we can't use it for pulmonary imaging yet. And that wraps up my presentation. Here are my references if you would like to research this further. And here is a platypus that you would very much like to pet to remember this technique. So that's it for today's presentation. Thank you for watching. And if you liked it and you like the baby hands, feel free to subscribe down below. 
And I'll see you guys next time on It's a Gray Matter. Thank <laughs> you.